What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. People ask me all the time, I see you showing off all these gadgets, but what do you actually carry with you? Honestly, my kit's got a lot of stuff in it. Now, keep in mind, I'm not actually a professional penetration tester, but I do really like to have gadgets. Also, if you know anything about me or you've watched through all the videos on my channel, you'll know I've got an awful lot of hobbies. So today, I'm gonna run through what I'm calling an everyday carry, but it's kind of gonna be like what I would pack into a go bag. Now, this won't be everything I'd pack into a go bag, but it's gonna be all the tech stuff that I have that I'd carry with me. So buckle up and let's get ready. I got some cool stuff. Let's go. First and foremost, obviously, I'm bringing my Flipper Zero. Here's my Flipper Zero. Obviously, it's got pretty much the latest and greatest everything because, you know, that's kind of what I do. But check it out. Here we are. I'm actually running the uh, latest dev version of XFW with my own custom animations. We've got a uh, custom case for my Wi-Fi dev board. That's running the latest version of Marauder, which also has Evil Portal. It's got everything I need. It's also got custom fonts, which I actually just did a video on. Very cool. And of course, I couldn't only bring one. I'd bring two. I'd bring the transparent one with the uh, the ABS case. Um, the you know the resin cases that we got printed. Those are a little softer, so this one's a little bit more rough and tumble. So I bring with that one too. Plus, this one's got the flipboard on it, and I have Simon. So I've got a game to play. Check it out. Fatality. That game's actually a ton of fun to play. I mean, Simon's a really simple game. It was actually uh, coded by Jarek Jameson, AKA Code All Night. Um, he's got an entire series teaching you exactly how to code that game for your flipper. Also, quick thanks to Make It Hacken for sending me that flipboard. The thing's awesome. We're actually gonna have a giveaway for another one of those real soon, so stay tuned. Now, the next piece of kit I'd carry with me would be the ESP32 Marauder by I Just Call Me Coco. This one's got obviously my own custom case because that's kind of one of the things I like doing. Now, of course, in classic fashion, my battery's dead, but this thing's super cool. It has all of the Wi-Fi capabilities that it's always had, but now it's got GPS. So it's actually a war driving monster. This thing is super cool. Now, if I'm trying to be really covert, I can actually do the exact same stuff on this little tiny guy right here. This is the uh, ESP32 Marauder Mini. It's got pretty much all the same features. And if you're resourceful enough, you can actually hook it up to GPS. What's cool about this one is it's no longer a touch screen, but it's got a little four-way rocker switch on it, which is really cool. It's actually the same type of four-way switch as is on AWOC's Dual ESP Mini. This thing I'd carry more or less just as my emotional support piece of hardware because it's so pretty. I absolutely love how this thing came out. So along the same lines of Wi-Fi penetration, what we can do is grab our Ponegashi, which I would obviously carry. This guy can deauthenticate networks and then capture handshakes, which can then be used to crack Wi-Fi passwords, which is really cool. Now, obviously only test on hardware, networks, things like that that you control. Otherwise, it's completely legal. Don't be a skid. Along the same lines is a project I'm actually planning on showing you guys a little bit later on. But for now, here's at least a sneak peek, although I forgot that I broke the software, but this is what's gonna be called the Fancy Gachi. It's basically a Ponegachi with a little bit more style. So again, spoiler for what's ahead. But hey, you know what's not a spoiler? Is this segue to today's sponsor. Delete me. The internet can be a crazy place, but you know what? It's full of your data. Data brokers are everywhere and they're looking for every single piece of information they can find on you. Then once they have all your data collected, they go ahead and sell it. That's not cool. But what is cool is delete me. Now, these data brokers are required by law to remove you if you ask them, but they're not required to make that easy. Well, that's where Delete Me comes in. They go through and check all of the data brokers to figure out who has your information, and they do all the work of removing you from those lists for you. When you sign up, they'll actually create a report for you to show exactly how many places your data actually is. Now, I've just started using Delete Me, but you can see already how many data brokers they've already removed my information from. So head on over to joindeleteme.com and sign up for your own account today. You can follow the link down below in the description or use code Sasquatch, that's S-A-S-Q-U-A-C-H, for 20% off. I love getting you guys discounts on this stuff. That's joindeleteme.com, code Sasquatch for 20% off. Thank you so much, guys, over at Delete Me. Your services are amazing. You guys are awesome. Let's get back at it. And then just to round out our Wi-Fi hacking capabilities, I would of course have my Evil M5 stack. 
This was done by the other one. We had done a video just a few weeks ago, I think, on the software. It's pretty similar to Ponigachi, but it's got some other really great features in it. It's got a karma attack too, like so much cool stuff. Definitely check this video out if you wanna learn more about this guy. All right, now here's something I'm super excited. I literally just got this and you can tell because I haven't even fully made a custom case for it yet. And of course that is the Hack RF. Now I am brand new with this thing and I barely know how to use it. I have a whole, whole bunch of learning to do with it. But what's great is there's an entire another community, just like the Flipper Zero community, just for this device. And I happen to know a few guys like my buddy Snorin, who happens to know a whole lot about this thing. Yeah, this is what I've started to do so far on it as far as making a custom case. Semi-transparent, we're gonna try to get it clearer. But yeah, in the back, I use the, uh, you know, custom infill that I like to always use. And then actually on there, that knob is a knob from my 1996 Gibson Les Paul. Um, that's, yeah, actually an old knob. Um, it's pretty cool. I don't know. I like it. I am so psyched to have one of those. I am looking forward to learning absolutely everything I possibly can on it. I know there's a ton of great resources out there. And as soon as I learn stuff about it, I'm going to teach you guys every step of the way. Now, if there was one extra piece of electronics to bring with me, it probably would be Raspberry Pi. These things are so capable. The new Raspberry Pi 5, which this is not, unfortunately, this is a 4, but it's still super usable. But the Pi 5 is supposed to be twice the speed of this thing, and that's a ton of processing power. Now, I've used Raspberry Pis before for tons of stuff. The Simpsons TV, Ponegachi, those are running on Raspberry Pi Nanos, but the full-on Pi has a ton more power and we can do a ton more stuff with it. I'm actually looking at a HID keyboard exploit that came out a little while ago that I'm gonna be installing on my Raspberry Pi soon. When I do, I'll let you check it out. It's a monster. Moving right along, something I carry with me literally every day, and these are my actual keys, so I'm not gonna show you anything on there, but I've got two little micro USBs on there. Now on these relatively innocuous looking USBs, one's a 128 gig. That's just a storage, you know, USB. It's got BitLocker, so shouldn't be particularly easy to get into. Now the other one is special. It's only 64 gigs because it doesn't have to be that big. What that one has is Medicat. Now what Medicat is, is actually a live operating system. You plug it in, boot the computer, you can boot directly into Medicat as its own OS, which is super cool. Now, once you're inside that operating system, there is a full suite of tools. So I'll just rattle off some of them. But basically, it's got um, internet browser on there already. Um, there's diagnostic and forensic tools, disk management tools, driver tools. So you, it's really good for fixing broken stuff. Um, it has the ability to remove Windows passwords, change Windows passwords. It also gives you access to the actual files on the computer. So if you say you got locked out or maybe you got ransomware, you have the tools to fix it with Medicat. Now, Medicat makes it so much easier to deal with things like ransomware, viruses, malware, spyware, anything like that, because you're attacking it from the outside in instead of from the inside. It's such a cool tool. I literally love carrying that with me. I've used it so many times. Now, what I'm also going to carry is going to be my full kit from OMG. Now, this kit includes a OMG Elite cable. There's a bunch of different versions. This one happens to be to C to C. I've also got a USB A to C as well. Now, if I want to be a little bit more covert, I've got the OMG plug, which has the exact capabilities of the OMG cables, but just in this little teeny tiny form factor. Now, if you guys don't already know what the OMG cables do is basically it acts kind of as an overpowered USB rubber ducky. When somebody plugs that into their computer, it can either run a payload or it can start a Wi-Fi network that you can hop onto with your phone and control exactly what the cable does remotely. I have an entire video on the OMG Elite cable, so if that sounds interesting to you, definitely check that out because that thing is cool. Now, obviously, if you're going to have the OMG Elite cable or the plug, you're going to need the programmer. This little guy is what you use to connect it to your computer and program it and make it all work. Now, another cool thing to have, especially if you've got these wires kicking around your house it's the omg malicious cable detector i almost forgot what it was called now the omg malicious cable detector you can plug your cable into it and it will tell you if it's a malicious cable because you know you never know nowadays and especially if you get your cables mixed up you might forget which one's your omg cable now in a slightly different direction one of the things i also like to carry and i know i'm going to get a ton of slack for this one but is my lock pick set now inside this little case right here is actually a bunch of practice locks because I am very not good at lock picking. So practice locks, more practice locks. We've got more practice locks and then we've got, well, actually these are cylinder locks which I don't even have the picks for yet. All right, now here's the part we catch flack for which is my actual set of lock picks. These are not very good. Now it's definitely a beginner set, 
I've practiced a ton with them, but I just haven't gotten around to getting a really good set of lockpicks. So if any of you guys are particularly triggered by how bad my lockpicks are, feel free to get a hold of me and we'll figure out a way to get some better ones. All right, now we get down to the nitty gritty. This actually is pretty much my everyday carry from here on down. Now, I don't like to carry around big, heavy tools. I have a ton of multi-tools, but honestly, the one I carry is the Gerber Dime. It's got a nice set of pliers on it, which I find super useful. I work on a lot of small stuff. It's not really much that I use for bikes, but I use this a ton, more than I thought I would. It's also got what I really like, a really small pair of tweezers, because I get splinters constantly, so they're good to have. And then I'm never gonna get that back in. Here we go. Um, and it's just got, it's got everything you need. It really does have everything you need. It's not expensive. It's a great little multi-tool. Yeah, if I wanted to carry something a little bit bigger, I do have this SOG multi-tool, which is actually, interestingly enough, whoops, Shimano branded. I got it at a, uh, a bike conference, which is pretty cool, but it's even got, let's see if it's unlocked. It's got assisted, whoops, locked. Do, 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 how does this work? There we go. Assisted blades, really cool. Now, speaking of blades, it's really hard for me to settle on a knife that I like, and I got a ton. I went through so many knives to figure out really what I wanted to have in my pocket. What I settled on was actually the Civivi Elementum. This is mine, I've been carrying it, and what's interesting about this is it's actually a button lock, so there's no spring whatsoever in here. It's actually my favorite way, or my favorite lock for any knife at this point. Now, no, this is not for everybody because it's really easy to cut yourself with it because you kind of got to snap it up and close. Like, it took a little while to get the muscle memory for opening and closing it, but once you get it down, this thing works great, and you know, you can easily open and close it one hand no problem. Now, this next item is probably another divisive item, but it's actually just a really small flashlight by Coast. Now, this guy was cheap at around $20, and honestly, it's not my favorite, but it's what I have, and it works good enough for now. I would love, love recommendations on good, small uh, flashlights in the like, $20 range. I, don't, I can't justify spending like $50, $60, $70 on a pocket flashlight, but man, when you need it, it's so nice to have. It's actually funny. I use this constantly when I'm 3D printing and stuff. So I'll be like in there looking at my prints, trying to see the really small details. So, you know, a small flashlight, what a great thing to have. I always recommend it. If you can fit it in your carry, small flashlight. Also, quick note, don't just buy the brightest flashlight you can possibly find. I made the mistake of doing this and I had a little teeny tiny flashlight. It had a ton of lumens and I'd shine it at something and it would just get washed out. You couldn't see anything with them. So just remember when it comes to flashlights, at least for small ones that you're gonna carry with you like that, brighter is not always better unless you're doing something like dog walking, but I don't have a dog. All right, last but not least is a seemingly possibly boring seeming item, but it's incredibly important. And that is a great pen. Now this is a Zebra F701. It's not the most expensive pen in the world, but honestly, it's great. It's all metal, it writes really well, and again, it's not very expensive. I know you can spend an absolute ton on pens, and honestly, I don't think you really have to. Honestly, it's got a great feel, it's all metal. I mean, it works for everything I want to. Honestly, it's all metal, it's got a great feel. It does literally everything I want to. I mean, it's got the right weight, it fidgets. I love this pen. I'm glad I got that one down. I felt like it was gonna be the card flip all over again. But yeah, I mean, I know you can store stuff in your phone, but it's always good to be able to write stuff down and a good pen, invaluable. So yeah, that's basically the kit that I would take with me anywhere I was going, especially if I knew that, you know, I might wanna get some hacking done in the process. Now, I know there are some things I forgot from my kit. So if you guys have any recommendations, leave them down below in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. You guys are legends please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll catch you next time.